The following organic video short covers the conformational analysis of substituted cyclohexane derivatives. The inherent problem presented to students is taking two-dimensional information, converting it to three dimensions, analyzing it, and communicating the answers in 2D. First, let's consider cyclohexane. The six-membered ring has two hydrogens, or two positions, on each of its atoms. When visualizing it in its planar form, one hydrogen or position is understood to be coming out of the page, and the other is going to be down into the page. Here we have the 2D representation. It's understood that each of these positions has two hydrogen atoms. Here it is written in 2D in uh, the planar form. And here on the right-hand side, again, cyclohexane. And if we rotate this, we can see that again that each carbon atom has one hydrogen up and one hydrogen atom down. In its most stable form, the chair conformation, you can now see here in three dimensions, each carbon has one atom that is axial and one that is equatorial. Here in this two-day representation on the left-hand side, I've shown the chair conformation in one direction, chair conformation in the other. Again, hydrogen atom up, down, equatorial, axial. The red atoms on the left, the red bonds on the right, the left hand side, sorry, are all in the axial position. And then upon a ring flip, they're all in the equatorial position. If we look at on the web page that I've put together, you can see again, here's a 3D representation of cyclohexane in the chair conformation. And this is how one would write that in two dimensions. In the next figure, I've shown all of the axial positions. Notice each atom, each carbon atom, has one axial position. They alternate. First, third, fifth are axial, and on the bottom, the second, fourth, and sixth are axial. As I said, upon a ring flip, the ones that were axial are now equatorial. And again, here the hydrogens are axial, and the green fluorine atoms are all equatorial. You can see they are on the equator, so to speak, of the cyclohexane ring. And this is how you'd write it in two dimensions. Again, 2D for axial and 2D for equatorial. And here's the same thing written in planar form. Notice we have fluorine atoms in this case that are alternating up and down. If we optimize this, you'll see that the fluorine atoms, the largest substituents, occupy the equatorial position. Right? We've it optimized to give us a chair conformation. There's the top of the chair, the bottom of the chair, and the four atoms in the middle. Every other atom is either axial, axial or equatorial. Now, if we look at a substituted cyclohexane derivative, for example, 1, 4, dimethyl cyclohexane. If we were to think of this, so this is written in the planar conformation. We write it in 3D, but planar again, you have one methyl group coming out of the page or up, and one methyl group going down into the page or down. Here I've written it showing all of the hydrogen atoms. And here in the hydrogen suppressed format, you can see we have a methyl group going up, a methyl group going down. Written in the chair conformation, there's two possible alternatives, methyl groups are both 
equatorial. Notice this carbon atom, the methyl group is up, the hydrogen is down, which matches this. Methyl group is up, hydrogen is down. On the four position, hydrogen up, methyl is down. Four position, hydrogen up, methyl again down. We do a ring flip and the methyl group is now in the axial position and the 4-methyl group is also in the axial position. Again, if we compare it to the planar geometry, you'll see again the methyl group is indeed up. The hydrogen is down. Same here, same there, same here. The difference is the chair has been flipped. And again, the 4 position, hydrogen is up, methyl is down. And here we have it written in the hydrogen suppressed format. Methyl group up, methyl group down, methyl group up, methyl group down. The, the alternative position is the hydrogen not shown is up and over here is down. We can look at this in three dimensions and this is what it looks like. Here we have the diaxial up and down. I rotate it so it fit, matches. Methyl group up, methyl group down. Upon a ring flip, methyl group is up, hydrogen is down, hydrogen is up, methyl is down. This is the trans 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane. If we look at the cis 1,4 conformation, here we have both methyl groups are up. You can see here both methyl groups are up. Or without the hydrogens, both methyl groups up. Again, the chair conformation. At this position, we have the methyl group up, the methyl group up. Methyl is assuming the axial position. Here it is equatorial. Upon a ring flip, equatorial becomes axial. Axial becomes equatorial. And if we look at it in three dimensions, you can see that's the case. Here we have both methyl groups are up. On one side, this should match. On the right side here, we have methyl group up, and it's axial. On the left side, we have the methyl group up, but it is equatorial. Again, the challenge is to be able to see something in 2D and turn it into a 2D representation that explains three-dimensionality. In order to do this, you must have a good comprehension of what the chair conformation looks like.